Nally Merchant's new album, Keep Your Courage, came out yesterday, April 14th, I think it was. And I am a child of the 90s. So I grew up on Nally Merchant. Um, I say Amy Lee of Evanescence is my favorite, but truly, I think I have to say that Nally Merchant is my favorite. I've loved her music since I was a kid. I've loved her for longer. So Nally Merchant is is my favorite, I think, because of course, the 90s, you had Sarah McLachlan, Tori Amos. I'm going to be seeing Nellie Merchant in concert next month for this album. And then speaking of Tori Amos, I'm going to see her in June. So, and I've, I've seen Sarah McLachlan one time uh, when I was in New Orleans. And I would love to see her again. I was a bit further back than I prefer to be. I like to watch concerts as of close as I possibly can. But I thought it would be fun to do a first impression of the new album. So the first song is called Big Girls featuring Abina Coombson Davis. I don't know who that is, but let's give it a listen. I'm gonna look up lyrics to these songs. The game, came easy. You never thought about it twice. You never thought about it twice. Your luck was never leaving. So you just threw the dice. And time was on your side. Definitely does have like definitely sounds like Nally Merchant, even though that might be the other person. The times got tough and life got even. So you told yourself some lies. So you told yourself some lies. And now you truly do believe that love is so unfair. Oh, but it hurts the worst, believe me, when you show them that you care, so never show that you care. If that ain't me, well, if that wasn't me, like, in the past. <clears throat> I know this is new. I know this is new, but it definitely does sound like classic Nelly Merchant. I think she might have gotten divorced a decade ago, and if I'm not mistaken, this might be her first new album in about that long, so I wonder if this is kind of based off of her experience with that. I feel like, like I already said, it does sound like Nally Merchant, like her style. It's not one of the strongest songs that I've heard. Definitely hope she's going to play plenty of classics at her concert, but there's got to be some really good strong songs on here. Oh, it just started playing into the next one. So, all right, that is the first track off of Keep Your Courage, Big Girls. And it was all right. It gave me like chill, nostalgic vibes, which... Nelly Merchant always delivers. Next up, we have the second track off of Keep Your Courage, Come On Aphrodite, featuring the same person from the last song, Abina Coombson Davis. I think there's a music video to this one too. Yeah, she's the goddess of love and fertility. Come on, Aphrodite, I'm begging you, begging you. Let's look at the lyrics for this. Come on, 
on Aphrodite, can't you see that I've been patient? Come on Aphrodite, can't you see? Yeah, so this is the next song. She's talking to the goddess of love and fertility. Definitely a theme, the first couple of songs about relationships, not showing that you care, wanting love. Obviously, she's now the merchant's been around a long time, so I feel like she's definitely true to her style. This, I'm by no means <laughs> into like music these days, most music these days. Um, so she just sounds how she sounds, and she doesn't try to be like what is going on. She's in her own lane, which is nice. <laughs> but I don't know. I feel like the lyrics and the sounds of the first couple songs so far have not been like the hard hitting, like, kick me in my soul. Like, Frozen Charlotte is one of my absolute favorite. Um, Thick as Thieves. My Skin. Mothers, Pearl of the Sea, Daughter Immortal, come to me, oh, come to me. I think their voices go well together. Of course, I just, I really just prefer Nelly Merchant, honestly. And is this the only one that she has a guest singer? I hope so. Nothing against the guest singer. She sounds beautiful and. I just, I just want to hear my Nally Merchant. That's what I want to hear. All right. Come on, Natalie. Give me something that is just going to rip my guts apart, you know? Let's see what song number three has in store. Number three, Sister Tilly. Like 
Buffy Saint Marie. I don't get any of these references. Oh, I just can't believe that you're gone. You've gone so far away mm. that you're gone. You've gone so That line, but you're gone, you've gone so far away. Which is sad and pretty weird. But she's also really known for her like socially conscious songs and lyrics and things. Oh I'm just looking ahead. I was just looking at the lyrics. You've gone away. Where you gone? You've gone away. I'm getting goosebumps at the future of the lyrics. found a song that really has like resonated with me with yet really yet but this one's more in the I don't know I probably like this one the best out of the three so far that I've listened to I'm just hoping for more songs that I have more of a connection to but this is this is good this is very Natalie
All right, so we've got seven more songs to go. That's that's a long one, seven minutes and 43 seconds. It's the longest one on there. Um, but I think we have seven more songs left to go. I am going to be looking different the next part of this video because I've got to go and take care of my kid. <laughs> it is the end of my Saturday to myself, so. I'll see you back here for tracks four through 10. As promised, we are back. It is a different day. I have a week until my Nally Merchant concert and a day for my birthday. Tomorrow's my birthday, May 5th. I turn 37. Next song that we're going to listen to is called Narcissus. Narcissus. So I guess a lot of the theme of this album is Greek mythology, Aphrodite, Narcissus, Narcissus, um, Narcissus, who knows if I'm saying that right, was fathered by a river god to a nymph named Liriope, Liriope was told by a prophet that Narcissus would reach old age if he failed to recognize himself. Would reach old, would reach old age if he failed to recognize himself. He turned into a very beautiful young man whom everyone loved. However, there was no one whom Narcissus would return affection. Once during the summer, he was getting thirsty after hunting and the goddess lured him to a pool where he leaned upon the water and saw himself in the bloom of youth. Narcissus did not realize it was merely his own reflection and fell deeply in love with it as if it were another young man. Okay. me feel the way I do without you now bewitched my mind took possession of my very soul enchanted me I was drawn to you like those ships of fools that had gone before Drawn by your haunting voice, but never, never reach the shore. I saw in an interview that she said before this album she hadn't written a song in six years. I saw an interview that she did with somebody. I usually get like that before I go and see a concert. I'll just watch every interview and like watch every performance was your reflection poor narcissus aching for the perfect love i went blindly through the fire for you i, I burned it all let me take you home. so far i'm underwhelmed <laughs> Which is sad, because I love Nally Merchant. <clears throat> I really hope she plays some of her classics at this concert, otherwise I might be very bored. <laughs> no offense, I love Nally Merchant. Like, it's a perfectly fine song, but like, it's not grabbing me. Which obviously, you know, even like in Evanescence, Amy Lee, she's my absolute favorite. Even on her albums, well, usually on her albums, it was like, 
only one song, but I'm like, eh, the rest of it is really like, um, but you know, I mean, a lot of times when you have a whole album, there's usually just a few songs that you like off of it, so we're almost halfway through the album, I'm really hoping that I find some, like, really profound ones, because honestly, some of Natalie Merchant's songs, like, really are deep and beautiful. Here you go. Next, stop, stop. The next song is called Hunting the Wren. I kind of like how this is starting out. Sharp as the wind. A little bit darker of a song, perhaps. Cold is the rain. Okay, no. I like this one. I knew you had something in there for me. The live long day. Sounds like a, a wide open like a really ominous, like by Donnelly's hollow. Under sod gorse and furs. Don't know what sod gorse and furs is. <laughs> there lies a young red. By the saint she was cursed. Okay. We love a curse. The wren is a small bird. Okay. So pretty she sings. She best at the eagle when she hid in its way. I love like very down, like sounding with songs, like and with stones. down notes. I don't know. I'm not a music person. I just know what I All like. Among the small mounds, they come from all over to hunt the red on the wide open Soldiers in jackets so red for barrack groom favors, pennies and bread. Mm, that sounds dreadful. The soldier is rough. In anger or fun, he causes much bloodshed with his big musket gun. Yeah, this is probably so far. We're halfway through. It's my favorite one so far. There was another one that I kind of liked the lyrics too, but I like the music of this one. Oh, like this song just sounds so nostalgic too. I like when the verses get to the end because I like how it ends. 
and I don't know what it's called, but like each verse has like four lines. I'm sure that that's like some kind of style of poetry that I don't know, but. With cold wanton whiskey, she soon is run down. But yeah, like slow, sad songs are my personal fave. On a staff through the town. Pretty. Now stop. Okay, the next one is called Guardian Angel. First impression is good. Guardian Angel, I've heard you laugh. This is pretty. Breaking branches in your path. Thought I felt your hair. I'm begging you Please forgive these Things I do I never meant to Almost sounds like um, the secret door of Evanescence, like part of that song. Because there's like just like a minute straight just instrumental. I'll see more lyrics.
is the ending. <clears throat> that is a good one. Okay. Next is Eye of the Storm. You swept over me like a raging sea lashing and crashing my side till I just gave way you were the tempest toss giving up for dead and lost yeah this one my first impression is not you say not necessarily love. for me but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. You were the eye of the storm. For the eye of the storm. I do like her, so like, um, folksy sound. I do appreciate that. This one, though, I don't think it is for me. Natalie, please play the classics at your show. I would really love for her to play Frozen Charlotte, Biggest Leaves, My Skin, Golden Boy, Motherland, Sally Ann. In your man of heart. This next line is interesting. From time to time, you still call across my mind. From time to time, you still call across my mind. Stumbling thief. Just a mumbling, stumbling thief. In the black of in the black of night. Is that everybody's ex? Oh, I'm getting happy birthday wishes for my dad. Hmm, perfectly fine song, just not what I'm looking for, Natalie. Not what I'm looking for. Okay. Tower of Babel is next. Tower of Babel. Okay, this is a biblical reference. Narrative in Genesis is an origin myth and parable meant to explain why the world's people speak different languages. Okay. Okay, Matt. Okay, I'm liking how this one starts out. short one. It kind of reminds me of uh, Effigy. That's a really short song of hers. Wow. Also the world we're living in today. <laughs> Spellbound and waiting, everybody roped and tied, nobody gets out alive. Oh shit. Alright, we have two more songs left. And song number nine is called Song of Himself. This one might be a little too upbeat for me. Natalie, where is the darkness? Where is the darkness, Natalie? Of a day begun that will mm. never, never come, won't come again. I like that 
that sing a song of gold and golded sun, of the dawning, of a day begun that will never, never come, won't come again. Pretty and sad, okay. Go. Okay. I do like how she just is who she is and she writes what she likes. I definitely, I feel like, I don't know if this is true or not, I imagine it is, but I feel like I can definitely see how, like, if Nora Jones has never mentioned that Natalie Merchant was an inspiration to her, I would be surprised because I feel like Nora Jones was, her sound so, sounds so similar to Natalie Merchant. All right, so now we have one last song. I'm gonna go let the cat, wait, she's just chilling. She keeps faking me out, man. She keeps acting like she wants to leave. Okay, the last song is called The Feast of St. Valentine. Saint Valentine was a clergyman, either a priest or a bishop in the Roman Empire who ministered to persecuted Christians. He was martyred and his body was buried on the Via Flaminia on February 14th, which has been observed as the feast of Saint Valentine, Saint Valentine's Day, since at least the 18th century. Okay? Yeah. In the deep and darkest night of your soul okay. okay When you curse and rule the day That you did dare to give your heart away Sounding good Take courage in the thought you belong this is pretty. you're not alone. We're here to give you shelter from the storm. The guitar part of this is really pretty. I think this is a, a good ending song of the album. Second song having a soldier theme. We'll come to you. I this next verse. Such a vast uncharted wilderness to see. Strange lands, strange beasts. But I'll go where you See where the title of her album came from because the next don't stop your search um, by the grace has of keep your courage keep your courage keep your faith and take this paper high to keep you safe oh. keep you safe I'm just looking at the end of this song Keep your hope and faith and love will take us on to So I've liked a few that have been really good. And love, love, love will be our bond. Love will conquer all. Beautiful, Natalie. Beautiful.
I approve of this song. Great way to end the album. Give me a sad and beauty with a little bit of beauty and hope. Yeah, makes a good song. All right, love will win, love will conquer all. Nice. Yeah, I mean, good album. Did I love all the songs? No. Were there some good ones? Yes. Natalie definitely knows how to write some lyrics. There was some beautiful music in there. Excited to see her in a week. And I want to do more of these like first listen music reviews. Kind of the only time I've done this has been to Evanescence songs because they are my favorite. But Natalie has to be my ultimate favorite because I grew up with her music and I've loved her the longest. Her and Sarah McLaughlin. But I want to do more like like ranking songs, album reviews, things like that. Um, I think that they're a lot of fun. I just need to figure out a way to do them so that I don't get demonetized. <laughs> I know that people do it, so I need to kind of see how I should do it. But I thought it'd be fun to give this album a first listen because I'm just excited for the concert and it kind of is hyping me up. So if you liked this, of the like three people, I'm sure that will see it. <laughs> Uh, give this video a like and let me know what is your favorite Natalie Merchant song. And if you want me to review other music, what would you like me to listen to and review? And subscribe. I do all kinds of random videos. We are back home from the Natalie Merchant concert. This was the concert tea that uh, she had. And then this is the back. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about it since I didn't right after the show because I needed to get back to the hotel and not get murdered on the streets of Cincinnati. Um, I don't have any idea like what the crime rate or anything is there, but it was 11 o'clock and there were tons of people coming out of the theater after the show, but then everybody started kind of falling off as I was walking. And honestly, I have recurring nightmares about getting murdered walking home. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this in the vlog, but also at the end of my Keep Your Courage album review slash first listen. listen. So I noticed that everybody there was probably like 15 to 20 years older than me. So it seemed that a lot of people really got into her when they were around her age, like in their 20s, when she first came out, when she was with 10,000 Maniacs, when she started her solo career. Um, oh, but backing up before that, like the, the drive there and any time that I had some spare time on the trip, I was listening to the latest album, particularly Hunting the Wren and Feast of St. Valentine, I think is what it's called. Just getting myself hyped up. So... The show was three hours long. She played some of my favorites. She played Frozen Charlotte, which I've never heard her play live. I saw her one other time in Portland, Oregon about six years ago. And this set was so much better than that concert. This concert was pure magic. Three hours in this beautiful theater. It was called the Taft Theater in Cincinnati, Ohio. First time I've ever been to Ohio and we stayed at this beautiful hotel that was like less than a half a mile from the theater called the Little Park Hotel? Park? Park? The Little Park Hotel, I think is what it was called. Beautiful hotel, Mother's Day weekend. And so 
<clears throat> when she played Frozen Charlotte, I was just shocked. I, I, that was the number one song I wanted her to play and she played it and I got choked up because it's my favorite song of hers and I've never heard it played live and it was so beautiful. And Natalie Merchant was absolutely magical on stage. Her voice sounds the exact same as it did back in the 90s. Live, she sounds like exactly how she does on an album. And for three hours, she just kept going strong. Her voice was beautiful and powerful throughout the whole show. Uh, she played My Skin, which means a lot to me because that song I was listening to a lot when I was in my early 20s. And it's such a beautiful song. She played Break Your Heart, which is another favorite. Um, and she played my favorite song of her album, The Feast of St. Valentine. And then, you know how a lot of times when you go to concerts, it'll be the end and the artists will leave the stage and then people kind of stay there and they keep cheering. They come back out and do a few more songs. So she came back out and did Motherland, which I was hoping she would do. It's Mother's Day weekend. And while she was singing that, she was looking out into the crowd, like right in front of her. And she saw somebody with their mother. I don't know what they were doing. I guess they were like having a moment. She's like, is that your mom? And then she just started crying. Natalie Merchant started crying. I don't know if she still has her mom in her life. I think Natalie is in her 60s. There was a lot of crying at the concert. Like when I was crying, I was like trying to like wipe my tears and just like, it was just very emotional, but it was beautiful. It was magical. But I would hear like other people sniffling around me. So, um, and I would hear like before the show, I got there early and they opened the doors an hour early and I was sitting in my chair and I was hearing people talk about how long they loved her and how much her music means to them. And it really is true because watching her on stage, she's such a seasoned performer that you can you can see all those years of experience of how much of a confident performer she is. She commands the stage, like she holds the audience in the palm of her hand. She's just a beautiful performer. And at the end of the three hours, I wasn't fatigued. I wasn't ready to go. I was just wrapped up in the moment and trying to enjoy every second of it. And it was just, one of the best concert experiences, if not the best so far. And I've been to quite a few concerts and also have like two more lined up this year. I'm going to go with my mom to see Brian Adams. That is going to be such a special show because, uh, she played Brian Adams a lot when I was a kid and everything I do, his song from the Robin Hood soundtrack in the nineties is my favorite song of all time. It's the most played song probably in my childhood. And then a week after that, I'm going to see Tori Amos at the Ryman here in Nashville. She did play a few other songs from Keep Your Courage. Sister Tilly, she talked about how meaningful that song was to her. Um, she wrote about a woman in her area, I think in upstate New York, who was a fixture there and meant a lot uh, to the people. And so when she died, she felt inspired to write about her and how her presence was missed. And then she, there was somebody else she referenced in the song. And so when she was recording that song, that person passed away. And so to her, the song is meaningful because it references a generation of women who are passing on now or around now. And it just kind of gave me goosebumps because I was just like, wow, yeah, like, time goes on, we all die. And I always, you know, I really, I really do hope that when I'm gone, especially for my daughter and any of my family left behind, I really hope that I was, you know, left a, a meaningful mark and that I missed and can be talked about fondly because I was a good person. Um, also, you know, I always wanted to do something really big and meaningful and have success. And I guess I could say I have that. Obviously, I love my daughter more than anything. And I feel like that's a huge success in my life. My greatest achievement and always will be. But seeing 
Natalie Merchant up there and how long she's had a career and how much people love her really makes me hope that for myself, I can leave a legacy of some kind. I don't know what that will be, but I've always wanted it to be something. I've just never known what it, what it would be. I guess time will tell. <laughs> Beautiful album. We love her all these years. Amazing Mother's Day weekend. And I'm very happy and I'm very happy to be home. We were greeted with a little rain shower when we came home and rain is my favorite weather. So that was a nice homecoming. It's like in the seventies and just beautiful outside. And it was the perfect quick weekend. You can get there and like, I don't know. We have to charge our car, we have an electric car, but if you don't have to charge, you can get there in under six hours from uh, Nashville to Cincinnati. So it was the perfect quick weekend trip. Another thing that I just wanted to say, so I just got on YouTube as I was trying to upload my last video for my Nally Merchant concert experience. And this was a suggested video. It's a interview she did on, I didn't know Katie Couric had a show called Katie. This was nine, nine years ago that it was uploaded or something. And all the comments were talking about how Natalie Merchant is so unpretentious. She's, you know, so huge, but still so humble and normal and generous and all these things. And I thought about that too. And seeing these interviews and how she carries herself, she's a legend, but she is just a normal person with an incredible talent. And I'm sure some luck is thrown in there too for why she got so big, even though I saw some discussion online about how she could have even been bigger if she would have been you know, part of the big pop machine and I don't know, went another way. But she's an artist and true to herself and she's not flashy. She's just has a beautiful voice and writes beautiful songs. And she's my ultimate favorite, all time favorite. You know, I grew up on her music, so she's just my favorite and in this interview she's talking about how she likes to write from other people's perspectives in her her music and she writes some heartbreakingly beautiful songs which are my personal favorite kind of songs when they're sad but my other favorite who's like tied or a very close second is amy lee of evanescence both of these women they're like 20 years apart i think in age but both of them are so talented and write the most beautiful songs I've ever heard. And they're big names and they're recognized all over the world. But they just seem like such regular people. Like personally, like personality wise. Very down to earth, low key. And just really cool, complex people. But they don't seem full of themselves. They don't seem wrapped up in fame. They seem to know what it's really about. And it's, I love watching interviews with those two women because they just seem so normal. <laughs> Thank you.